OK, so we're going to solve this problem. We've got n cars on some circular racetrack here. They all start off, they travel at the same speed, but they're not necessarily all going in the same direction. And if two of the cars collide with each other, instead of having a proper collision, just for simplicity, we'll say that they bounce off each other and then continue going in the reverse direction with the same speed. And what we need to do is we need to show that at some point in the future, there'll be a time where every single car is back in its original starting position. This is a really nice problem to solve. It's a really nice example of mathematical problem solving, where if we just wanted to try and track, say, at time t, the position and the direction each car's going in, it'd be extremely complicated, especially with these collisions. But there's a really beautiful solution to this. So just one thing to mention is if we have all of the cars were going in the same direction, let's say it takes an hour for them to go back round, then after an hour, all of the cars would be in the same position. But if we've got these collisions to deal with, it gets much more complicated. So this is the case that we'll deal with now. If we've got the collisions, there's an observation we can make which can make things much nicer for us. So if you've got two cars collide with each other, and then when they collide, they go off in the opposite direction with the same speed, this is actually equivalent to having our two cars just sort of passing through each other. So just to draw a picture for this, let's say we've got a black car and a red car, which are about to collide with each other. So in this scenario, basically they hit and then the black car starts going off in the reverse direction, the same for the red car. But this situation, this is somehow equivalent to, if you don't care which car's which, the black car starts off and then when they collide, let's say that they just pass through each other. So once they collide, you can see this red car is now traveling in the same sort of position and direction as the black car was. But of course here we do care which car is which, because we don't want to have just some cars in the original positions, we want to have every single car in its original position. But still we can get some partial progress on the problem here using this idea of cars passing through each other. So you can say that because this idea of cars passing through each other is somehow equivalent if you don't care which car is which, you can say that after one hour, once everyone's gone round passing through all of the other cars, there will be a car in each of the original starting positions. So now the problem is that's not necessarily the car you wanted. So if we start labeling them now, so you've got car one, car two, and car three, maybe car one has now moved some number of steps around and it's moved over to here. You would need to keep going for another couple of hours until you could eventually get this back into its right position. And the collisions, even though they're quite difficult to work with, they are helpful here because if you think about car two, this is just count colliding and bouncing back between cars one and three. So actually the order of our cars is preserved with these collisions. So this is particularly useful now, because if you think, let's say that car one has gone k steps along in this configuration, so maybe it started here, but then after one hour it's gone down here, it's done some certain number of steps. And after one hour, we go k steps along, and all of the cars have moved k steps along because this order is preserved. So we can just keep going here, essentially, until all of our cars go back into their original configuration. So if we were to go for n hours, where n is our number of cars, then each car will have gone n times k steps. You can see here, n times k steps, if you go around n steps, you're actually back to where you started. If you go around 2n steps, you've gone around twice, but you're again back to where you started. So if you go around kn steps, then you are back to where you started. So you might not need to go around quite so many steps, and you might not need to do this for n hours if n and k have a common factor, but you can see here that because the order is preserved by these collisions, that if we were to go around for n hours now, say if it takes one hour to go all the way around, so we do this n hours now, using this idea of the cars passing through each other, you can see that we go to a different configuration each time, but then eventually we will reach a point where every single car is back in its original position.